If there is one mystery that continues to trouble historians and maritime archaeologists alike, it is this. Why does Viking wood still survive where later timber failed? Ships pulled from fjords after a thousand years, stave churches standing through endless winters, harbour pilings preserved beneath cold water, all point to a method that went far beyond good carpentry. The Vikings did not rely on chance. They relied on a deliberate system of wood waterproofing that required no synthetic chemicals, no industrial processes, and no modern sealants. This knowledge was once common among Norse builders, yet today it is largely forgotten. This guide is for those who want more than romantic imagery of longships. It explains the actual method Vikings used, why it worked so well, and how the same principles can still be applied today with remarkable results. Why Viking survival depended on waterproof wood. In the North Atlantic world, untreated wood fails quickly. Salt spray, constant moisture, freeze-thaw cycles, and fungal decay destroy poorly protected timber within years. For the Vikings, this was not an inconvenience. It was an existential threat. Ships were homes, weapons, and lifelines. Buildings faced months of darkness and damp. A rotted beam could mean death at sea or collapse in winter. The Viking solution had to be durable, repairable and achievable with local materials. What they developed met all three requirements. Before any sealing could even begin, Viking builders had to prepare the wood, and, well, this process really started long before any coating was ever applied. Viking carpenters were quite particular, choosing slow-grown pine and spruce, which were, you know, full of natural resins. They often felled trees in the winter months, when the sap content was at its lowest. This clever timing reduced internal moisture and, importantly, helped to limit future cracking. Once the wood was shaped, the next step was to deliberately expose the most critical surfaces to fire. Now, this wasn't burning for destruction. No, it was a careful, controlled surface charring. The outer fibres were blackened just enough to carbonise them, but not so much as to weaken the structural core. This technique sealed the pores, reduced the nutrients available for fungi, and, at the cellular level, created a water-resistant barrier. Now, this method alone already extended the wood's life dramatically. But, you see, the Vikings didn't just stop there. Now, let's talk about why pine tar was really the heart of Viking waterproofing. The true secret was, in fact, pine tar. Viking tar was produced by slow-heating, resin-rich pine roots and wood in these low-oxygen pits. The result was a thick, sticky substance that, you know, actually penetrated the wood rather than just sitting on the surface. When applied warm, tar-soaked deep, into charred timber. It bonded with any remaining resins, creating a flexible watershedding layer that moved with the wood as temperatures changed. Unlike modern sealants, it did not crack or peel. Instead, it aged gracefully, darkening and hardening, while impressively remaining functional. Ships were routinely tarred inside and out, Roof shingles, wall planks, and exposed beams received the same treatment. This was not a one-time process, not at all. Maintenance was actually part of the system. Now, how did maintenance keep Viking wood alive for centuries? 
Well, one of the most overlooked aspects of Viking waterproofing is honestly reapplication. Tar was reapplied regularly, especially on ships. Rather than scraping away old layers, new tar was brushed over weathered surfaces, refreshing protection and filling micro cracks before water could enter. This created a cumulative effect, you know. Over decades, wood became increasingly resistant to moisture and decay. The material itself evolved under care rather than being replaced. This mindset contrasts sharply with modern construction, where sealants are expected to last without attention and are replaced entirely when they fail. What archaeology confirms about this method is, well, quite fascinating. Archaeological analysis of Viking ships shows tar residues deeply embedded in hull planks. Microscopic studies reveal carbonized outer layers beneath tar, confirming deliberate charring. Stave churches display the same treatment on load-bearing elements, particularly near ground contact and roof lines. Now, let's talk about how this method can actually be applied today. Modern builders, homesteaders, and even survivalists can replicate this method with, well, surprising ease. You want to start with resin-rich softwood whenever possible. Next, lightly char the surfaces that will be exposed to moisture using a controlled flame, but make sure you stop before any cracking occurs. Allow the wood to cool completely. Then apply natural pine tar that's been warmed gently until it's fluid. Brush it into the surface, always working with the grain. For best results, it's wise to apply multiple coats over time rather than trying to saturate everything all at once. Be sure to allow each layer to penetrate before adding the next. For outdoor structures, Periodic reapplication every few years maintains protection indefinitely. This approach works exceptionally well for fence posts, raised beds, sheds, boats, and, of course, historic restorations. So, why does this Viking method still beat modern sealants even today? Well, modern waterproofing products, they tend to form surface films, and when those films fail, water gets trapped beneath them, which, honestly, just accelerates decay. Viking tar, on the other hand, does the opposite. It penetrates, it breathes, and it repels water without sealing moisture inside. It also avoids that chemical brittleness you sometimes get with modern products. Pine tar, you see, remains flexible in the cold and stable in the heat, making it just perfect for those harsh climates. This is why, you know, structures treated centuries ago still endure. What this forgotten knowledge teaches us is, well, quite profound. The Viking waterproofing method reflects a philosophy of cooperation with materials rather than domination over them. Builders worked with wood's natural properties, enhancing what already existed instead of replacing it with artificial barriers. This approach demands patience, observation, and maintenance, but it rewards those qualities with longevity that modern construction rarely achieves. If this deep exploration into lost Viking engineering added value to your understanding of history and practical craftsmanship, subscribe to the channel and share this guide with others who appreciate durable knowledge. These methods survive only if we remember and use them.